I saw the Woman King, and uh, shit was pretty good. Shit was pretty good. It was exactly what I described in the last video. It was a a well made. Well, not. It was a good movie, an entertaining movie. It had some flaws, and it presented some images and story elements that I loved. And then it did some things that Hollywood does to historical stories that I'm like, yeah, that's not cool. And we need to have a conversation about that. But overall, I really enjoyed it. Um, I give it a, a seven out of 10. Not a perfect movie, but worth your time and definitely not worth the hate it got on the back end. And so I want to talk about that. And I got her, I got a Viola Davis next to this image of the late uh, Chadwick Boseman for a reason. Let me talk about one of the main reasons to be very critical about The Woman King. The Woman King is about a uh, nation in Africa, I believe this is pronounced Dahomey, um, that was in Benin and was a big part of the West African slave trade. So, you know, you'll hear right wing type people, you know, pull, pull out the trope, Africans sold black people into slavery. And thus, y'all should be mad at them. And, you know, that's a historical, it's, that's a, it's a factual thing that tribes like, um, that nations like the Dahomey were participated in the transatlantic slave trade. That is true. That is not what made slavery what it was. That is a part of it. But if you understand and know slavery, first off, slavery was an international thing. Most of the slaves that were taken directly from Africa went to the Caribbean. People don't know that. The vast majority of slaves that were taken from Africa, so slaves that were pulled from uh, the Homi tribe and the Oyo tribe and any tribes that were capturing and selling off African people, those people, majority of them, uh, went to the Caribbean. The amount of slaves in America, only a small fraction of them were born in Africa and taken from Africa and put here in America. And that is because the, the experience of enslavement in the Caribbean was much more brutal and harsh. Essentially, they had to keep replenishing their, their livestock. They had to keep taking people from Africa to the Caribbean because those slaves kept dying. That's number. So when we think about slavery in America, we're talking about the chattel slavery experience, which has little to do with the Dahomey tribe, the Dahomey nation. Because in America, they bred slaves. So the vast majority of slaves, people, Ados, FBA, whatever, these are people who are have lineage to enslaved and captured Africans, but those family lines were able to grow in the Americas from those original handful of people. So if there were a thousand slaves taken from Africa, of course, that's not like, please don't take that number serious. I'm just using a big round number to proportion it out. 900 of those slaves ended up in the Caribbean and South America and 100 ended up in America. And that 100 from America were able to thrive, thrive, reproduce is a better word, for long enough to create us today. So that argument, aside from most of the reasons, like logistically is stupid. That said, the Dahomey, the Dahomey nation never stopped their slave trade. And in this movie, they depict them as being the champions of stopping the slave trade. And that's not cool. That's ahistorical. And when it comes to stories, especially stories about Africa, stories about African people, stories about black people in general, I'm not gonna say we should have a higher standard for historical accuracy, but we should be more careful when we're introducing new information to the population when the old information ain't out there. So it's not okay to recolor that piece of history in my opinion. But what's pretty apparent if you start paying attention to the people who are arguing the most about this movie is two factions and it's two factions that have a lot of overlap it's Eidos motherfuckers and it's Manosphere niggas and they have a lot of overlap in those two communities and it don't take long to see some shit like this is just Hollywood trying to emasculate black men and refuse to put 
positive images of black men on TV and in the movies and the further uh, destruction of the black male image in the media, da, 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 da. And don't get me wrong, as you can see from my content, there are definite image problems with the images of black men in the media. But notice that certain niggas don't have no problems with the black male image until they have positive representation of black women's images. That is what this is all about. And I'm connecting this to the Bring Back T'Challa movement, which I wish I could, just like my criticism of, of, uh, of um, the Woman King, I wish I could wholeheartedly be a part of that. But when I look at my surrounding, the, the people around me, I'm like, I don't trust y'all niggas. Y'all niggas aren't mad for the right reasons. So Black Panther drops in November 11th, and it's pretty clear they're bringing back uh, spoiler alert, but it's not a spoiler because I don't know. This is just this is just a theory. I'm pretty positive that either um, Okoye or the little sister whose name I don't recall right now is going to be in the Black Panther suit uh, at the end. I'm almost positive that's going to happen. And okay, that's fine. Two things to think about. So all these dudes talking about they're trying to destroy and remove black men's images from the media. First off, let's talk about just in the MCU, all the black men that we've seen. So we already had a Black Panther movie starring uh, Chadwick Boseman, co-starring freaking uh, Michael B. Jordan. Thank you. So you had those two very interesting juxtapositions of black masculinity on screen. I got a Black Panther video coming in November. I'll talk about it then. You already had that. You got War Machine. You got Captain America. You got Black Spider-Man. We about to have young Black Captain America. If you know your Marvel lore, you paying attention, they're gonna have a, a younger Black Captain America in the future. I guarantee you it's coming. I forgot about Luke Cage, thank you. I forgot about Luke Cage. We got Blade on the way. Let's not talk about that we already got three Blade movies starring the blackest nigga to ever hit Hollywood and Wesley Snipes. We can go all the way back to Meteor Man. I'm not saying that representation of black men is perfect or great. There are problems. But tell me the corresponding images of black women. I'll wait. Give me five significant roles for black women in a heroic context. Aqua Paws. Crickets. We got Holly Berry and Catwomen, which is a fucking travesty. We got Holly Berry and Storm, which is a fucking travesty. We got one of the sisters as uh, in WandaVision who had all of five minutes of screen time. She's gonna be back in the new Captain Marvel movie, but she's gonna be a side character. Like you see how the, you see how this representation is looking for the sisters, right? It's not up to par. So like, miss me with this bullshit. Miss me with this bullshit. I'm still going to see Black Panther. I heard it's two and a half hours long. Ron Coogler's an amazing um, director. This shit's gonna be dope. I have all faith that it's gonna be a good movie. It's gonna have its own problems because it's a Disney movie and it's Hollywood. But miss me with the other nonsense.